Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. Let's take a look at the rack and pinion gear we built in a prior video so we can understand the mechanics for how it works. So first things first, we have two pieces here. This round gear here is actually called the pinion gear. And then we have the rack here. This is long um, horizontal stretch. Looking at the assembly, which of these two gears do you feel is the input? If you've noticed that the handle is attached to the pinion gear, and therefore makes the pinion gear the input, you would be correct. In this assembly, the pinion gear is our input, the rack is going to be the output. So understanding the difference between input and output means, well, let's take a look at the gear ratio on this, or at least an approximation of the gear ratio. Because this isn't quite a traditional gear, calculating gear ratio requires us to look at it a little differently than number of teeth or the diameter. We can't really take the diameter of the rack here. Uh, we could look at the number of teeth, but there's also another way we could look at this, and we could look at how far does this travel for each rotation of the pinion gear, which is very similar to what we did with the lead screw. So to do that, I'm going to take a ruler here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this edge, and right now I'm lining it up with the number nine on my gear. Let's let's put this so it's face down. It makes it easier mark to, to go from. So I'm lining this up with nine inches. So I'm starting at nine inches, and I'm going to rotate this one rotation to see how far it goes. So um, going on this, let's double check. I've got it lined up there. So one full rotation. And when I look at this, I see that it's now, this point is now sitting at 10 and a half inches. So what do you think the inches per rotation is for this system? Well, if you're saying 10 and a half minus nine means one and a half inches per rotation, then you would be correct. So what can we do to increase or decrease that ratio? The pinion gear here, if we want to increase or decrease the distance this travels per rotation, we need to change the size of the pinion gear. A larger pinion gear means more distance traveled. A smaller pinion gear means less distance traveled. Though, you'd have to really get small to get some, uh, a smaller distance, considering this is actually one of the, small, the smallest gears that comes with the uh, VEX kits. So, but you can change the size of the pinion gear to change the distance the rack travels. Okay, so next thing to look at is the flow of power on this one. So do you think the flow of power is reversible or not reversible? In other words, if I were to push on the rack, could I make the pinion gear turn? Now that you have a prediction, let's see what actually happens. Uh, we see that actually, yes, you can make the pinion gear turn by pushing on the rack or pulling on the rack here. So that means that this gear has a reversible flow of power. Now, we have a reversible flow of power, but what about direction of travel? Can I go both ways on this when turning the handle? Well, you may have already noticed that you've seen this already. I've actually made it go in both directions here. So this actually has a reversible direction of travel as well which is useful because it opens up some of the options for how you could use this. So that's the mechanics here, but I want to point out an example of where this is seen because with some of these gears, they're gears that we're not used to seeing a lot, or a, a lot of people don't think about these gears unless you actually work with them. So um, I want to point out a very interesting on one on this because there is a chance you have one of these in your kitchen drawer at home. Now, what would that object be? Well, interestingly enough, it would be an ice cream scoop. So it depends a little bit on the scoop you use, but if you have one where you squeeze a trigger and there's a little metal piece that slides back and forth to help push the ice cream off of the scoop, then chances are it is using a rack and pinion gear. Now, with some ice cream scoops, you can actually see that uh, rack and pinion um, exposed and other ones it might be encased within the housing but um, if you have that kind of ice cream scoop if you have any ice cream scoop at home you might go check that and see does it actually have a rack and pinion gear on it and that's probably one of the more interesting examples of this gear out in the wild 
Okay, so now that we've understand it, let's quickly review. Um, the input is our pinion, the output is going to be the rack. The distance the rack travels is dependent on the size of the pinion gear. This does have a reversible flow of power and a reversible direction of travel. So thank you for watching as we examine the rack and pinion gear. Feel free to hit that subscribe button to keep up with all future tutorials here at MythBadger Videos.